We'll be back shortly after 11.30 Eastern Time, 10.30 Central, for a closer look and a more detailed analysis of tonight's presidential debate. I'm Walter Cronkite, CBS News Election Headquarters in New York. This is CBS. Well, the great debate is now over, and coming up next on News Center 8, we'll follow the two candidates live to their reception headquarters, where both will be celebrating victory, of course. We'll go live to the Music Hall debate site, where Judd, Susan, and Dale will have some post-debate interviews. Jim has highlights of the Cavs confrontation tonight, and Dick says it's going to be fair but frosty. News Center 8 is next. Stay with us. Cleveland's Emmy Award-winning News Center 8 is next with those stories and reports from Mike Cragen and Stan Childress at the Candidates' Headquarters. This man sells cars. This man lends the money to buy them. Both are good at their jobs. So when you're going to look for a car, don't shop for the money with a car man. Shop with the money man, Ameritrust. Ameritrust can make you a low-cost auto loan before you shop for your car. And that can probably save you money when you buy your car. I'm next, Ameritrust. Let's get something going for you. We're doing something about it. We're working at making our energy last. We're doing something about it. Sunoco's got the know-how that can help you save today. Sunoco wants to make every drop count for America. That's why we have a new pump for unleaded gas. It has four grades of unleaded. Other companies just have super and regular. But most cars that need high octane can use R+, priced below our super. And most cars that run on our regular can use our lower-priced economy. The right Sunoco grade can save money for you and fuel for America. We're doing something about it. Sunoco is making every job count. Cleveland, you're a winner. Good evening, I'm Tim Taylor. Thanks for joining us. Here's what's happening. Our historic presidential debate is now history. But two hours ago, the drama and excitement in the city of Cleveland reached its peak. Governor Reagan and wife Nancy were greeted by a crowd of well-wishers as they left their hotel for the music hall debate site. At just about the same time, President Carter left his hotel. Earlier, several hundred Anderson demonstrators paraded outside Carter's hotel, protesting Anderson's absence from the debate. Police security was very much in evidence to make sure that nothing at all got out of hand. The candidates are about to leave the music hall tonight, and Judd and our political reporter Susan Howard are there live. Okay, thanks, Tim. We've been insulated from the tremendous crowds in and around Public Hall tonight up here in the TV8 Sky booth, but in moving around outside earlier, the atmosphere in downtown Cleveland tonight can only be described as electric. Oh, it certainly was, and all concentrating on the great debate. We've just seen it, of course, it's now history. Just what impact tonight's debate is going to have on the election next week remains to be seen. But time will tell, because going into this debate, one out of every three voters still had not decided which presidential candidate he or she preferred. Susan, one of the barometers the businessmen will use, businessmen will use, to determine who actually won, in their minds, tonight's debate, is the stock market. If it rises, I think they're going to feel that Reagan won. If it falls, I think they're going to feel that Carter won. I think that's going to be one of the barometers the businessmen, in any event, are going to be using tomorrow. Judd, the economy was touched on extensively in this debate. Here's a replay of what both men felt about inflation. Yes, you can lick inflation by increasing productivity and by decreasing the cost of government to the place that we have balanced budgets and are no longer running, grinding out printing press money 
flooding the market with it because the government is spending more than it takes in. And my economic plan calls for that. Governor Reagan's proposal, the Reagan Kemp Roth proposal, is one of the most highly inflationary ideas that ever has been presented to the American public. He would actually have to cut government spending by at least $130 billion in order to balance the budget under this ridiculous proposal. Carter and Reagan on inflation. Houston Rate City Camera reporter Dale Solly is live down on the music hall floor getting reaction to tonight's debate. And we're going to switch down to him live now. Dale? This is Robert Newman, the deputy director of the Democratic National Committee. Our polls have shown, Mr. Newman, up until tonight, that President Carter did not have enough support in, here in Ohio to carry the state. Did he do anything tonight, in your estimation, to change that? I think so. We saw a good speech by, and debate by a good Democratic president appealing to a Democratic traditional coalition of support that uh, is going to come around. There's a lot of undecided in this country, a lot of undecided in Ohio. I think he made a direct appeal, appeal to them. I think that uh, he defined the differences between himself and a conservative Republican opponent, and I think this will uh, bear fruit at the polls. Very briefly, how did his style play against the easy-going, laid-back, if you will, style of Mr. Reagan? I think the president showed himself to be uh, authoritative and competent and poised and presidential, and I think these are the things the American people want right now. You think he won the debate? I think so. I don't think it's a knockout, but he won on points. Okay, I'm sure that sentiment is shared at Carter Campaign Headquarters downtown. My colleague Mike Cragen is standing by live with that report. Michael? Well, Dale, we're here at the Boncourt Hotel with an overflow crowd of President Carter's supporters. There might have been even more people here, uh, but uh, somebody gave away too many tickets, and uh, hundreds, perhaps a thousand people had to be turned away. Those that did get in watched the debate on big screen TV, as you would expect a party loyalist. They, uh, they cheered the president's remarks. They often hooted at uh, Mr. Reagan's responses, but overall the response was, uh, well, really pretty pretty moderate all the way around. Uh, the crowd, as you can see, is now behind me. They're lined up around the podium. They're awaiting the arrival of their hero. The president is due here shortly. When he arrives, we'll be back. My colleague Stan Childress is standing by at a similar reception for Governor Reagan. Stan? Thank you, Mike. I'm live at Reagan's headquarters where we're an excited 1,200 people have just watched this debate. And with me is the Cuyahoga County's top Republican, Bob Hughes. Bob, I'd like to ask you your assessment of Reagan's performance tonight. Well, I think he just won the election. I think if you take a look and listen to this crowd here, some 2,000 people, and we had to turn 3,000 away, they're giving you the answer. Reagan's the winner. Bob Hughes, Republican from uh, Cuyahoga County, the Republican chairman here. And we'll be back uh, later on to let you hear from Reagan's running mate, George Bush. And now back to you, Tim. The fact that tonight's debate could make or break either Carter or Reagan was clearly reinforced by today's results of our exclusive TV8 Cleveland Press poll on the presidential race here in Cuyahoga County. The results when you Center 8 continues. It's coming your way. 40 railroad cars crammed and jammed with all the spine-tingling thrills and chills. The excitement, laughs and fantasy of the greatest show on earth. It's the most eye-dazzling spectacle you will ever see. The all-new Ringling Brothers and Barnum and & Bailey Circus, America's living tradition. See the greatest show on earth at the Coliseum October 30th through November 9th. When the winter's worst blizzard hit Red Lodge, Montana, three Toros took it on. A 14-inch, a 20-inch, and an electric start 20. What hit Red Lodge? Three Toros to help clear away. Haven't you done without a Toro long enough? Save up to $30 on selected single-stage models. If it takes shellfish to please the seafood lover in you, Red Lobster's your kind of place. Start with oysters on the half shell, then crack into crab legs or sweet lobster. How about tasty fried scallops or scrumptious shrimp? All kinds of shrimp. You say you just can't decide? How about a combination platter? Everything we do is for the seafood lover in you. Red Lobster for the seafood lover in you. 
The tremendous importance of tonight's presidential debate was clearly pointed up in our exclusive TV8 Cleveland Press poll on how the candidates are running here in Cuyahoga County. The poll showed that although Jimmy Carter was the favorite of Cuyahoga County voters when they were questioned last week, the key factor that became obvious was the large number of undecided voters. Most people, including our pollster Bob Dykes, feel that voters in Cuyahoga County, as well as across the country, were waiting for tonight's debate to decide. And how that 32% perceived tonight's debate will probably decide next week's presidential election. New Center 8 City Cam reporter Dale Solly is live again at Public Hall with more reaction on the debate. Dale? Tim, this is Bill Brock, the Republican National Chairman, and let me, we'll turn about his fair play, let me ask you, who won tonight? Obviously, you're going to say Reagan. <laughs> of course he did. Of course. The polls, our polls show, again, as I asked your counterpart at the Democratic side, our polls show that President Carter doesn't have the strength to carry Ohio. Is tonight going to push, push Ohio over for Reagan? I think so, because we talked about the issues that affect Ohio. We talked about jobs. We talked about inflation, the things that are really hurting people in this state, and every state for that matter. And I think the, the basic purpose of the whole debate was to get these issues out so that people could make their own judgment. And uh, President Carter spent his time attacking Governor Reagan, as he's done throughout the campaign, but he didn't talk about what he's going to do to put people back to work, what he's going to do to stop inflation. And I think that's the basic problem that he's had in the campaign. How would you assess uh, Mr. Reagan's, the governor's performance tonight? Was he as prepared as President Carter? Did he, did he come through on that end or what? Yeah, I think he did very well. It was a healthy, fun, uh, I think productive debate. Okay, thank you. Dale Solly, live with the city cam downtown. And apparently confident President Carter will be arriving soon at his reception headquarters at Bond Court. And New Center 8's Mike Cragen is standing by with a live report. Mike? Well, Tim, we're still waiting for the arrival of the president. We are expecting him here uh, any time now. We hope he gets here shortly while we're still on the air with our regular scheduled newscast. Uh, in the meantime, I haven't noticed any dignitaries uh, over here. I think most of them were over next door in the debate itself. But uh, we thought we'd uh, chat with some of these uh, supporters here, some of the people that were pelting me with confetti a little bit earlier, if you saw it. You watched the debate closely tonight, didn't you? I sure did. How do, how do you think it went? Fine. Very good. Very good. Who do you think won? Oh, naturally, Carter. <laughs> no doubts? No doubts in your mind? Carter. Never, never. Just Carter. How about, sure. how about you? What do you think? Only Carter. Didn't no some way. of the things Reagan said make sense? No way. No way. Uh-uh. Are you all of one mind? You too? He left me very evasive. I look for him to be a little bit more stronger, but... I still say it'll be Carter, definitely. Okay, good enough. Thanks a lot. Live with the city cam at the Bond Court, uh, Carter's reception headquarters, Mike Cragen, New Center 8. Equally enthusiastic supporters are waiting to greet Ronald Reagan at his reception headquarters at Stover's Inn on the Square, where New Center 8's Stan Childress is live. Stan? Uh, the crowd is coming now. All of the enthusiasm here. There are at least a thousand people outside the hotel, and Reagan, I'm told, will be up here shortly. We will expect the... Dr. Henry Kissinger and uh, running mate George Bush and many others to be with him. And very shortly, we uh, will come back up here to show you Ronald Reagan entering the hall. This has been uh, a very enthusiastic crowd throughout the night, and they think, quite frankly, that Ronald Reagan clinched the election with his debate performance tonight. And uh, we'll come back shortly. Out of way. Well, I think, uh, I agree with Bill Brock, what he said just a few moments ago, Susan. I think that uh, it was a fun debate, and I, I think I feel that the, the tension in the atmosphere down here, the pressure has all been relieved, and it's obvious that looking at both the uh, headquarters of the candidates uh, there with Mike and Stan, that uh, a great deal of pressure has been relieved, and now everything is happy, and both, uh, both sides feel that they've won, which is a pretty good pretty good uh, position to be in. Both men campaign daily, Judd. Both, both men talk to people in huge crowds, but there's nothing like talking to 80 million people over television in a presidential debate. I bet they are so relieved that it's over. No doubt about it. And we're going to be back with more coverage of uh, the debate and after the debate, right after this. There's a spirit that lives on in this bottle. The spirit that was born in the original Pabst Blue Ribbon beer. The beer that was selected 
America's best. That's the spirit that goes into brewing every glass of Pabst Blue Ribbon today. That's what makes us proud to say to you, give that man a Blue Ribbon. Get the ultimate in gourmet cookware now at Pick and Pay. Capri porcelain on steel cookware at savings of three to ten dollars. Snug fitting dome covers, lock in juices and flavor. Stainless steel rims protect against chipping. The permanently fused earth tone pattern is perfect for any decor. Add to your Capri set this week with the 10 inch fry pan, just $8.99. It earns more interest than a commercial bank. Money in a savings association is insured by an agency of the federal government. Over 60% of all the homes in Ohio have been bought or built with money from a savings association. Folks like you, folks like me, save more money safely at savings associations. Well, the debate may be over, but they're still talking about who won down at the Music Hall, where Judd and Susan are standing by live. Okay, thanks, Tim. I think at this point only time will tell who exactly won tonight's debate. Uh, of course, the time that we're talking about right now is one week from today when all of the voters throughout America will go to the polls. And as been mentioned many times tonight, some 80 to 100 million people watched tonight's debate. And there was uh, an extreme amount of undecided votes throughout the country, but specifically here in Cuyahoga County, uh, Susan, that uh, did not know prior to tonight's debate exactly how they were going to vote. Now, again, time will tell which way they're going to vote, but there were several classifications of people uh, that uh, in the TV8 Cleveland Press poll that we took that didn't know prior to the debate which way they were going to go, Carter or Reagan. Women being women, one of them. Women were probably the most undecided group of, of, the, of the entire poll. The women who had decided tended to favor, uh, excuse me, uh, Jimmy Carter, not Ronald Reagan. The, uh, it's going to be interesting to see how the women go. I know I had my personal feelings after watching the two candidates tonight, and it'll be interesting to see whether the other women who are watching agree. Certainly, the 1960 debate was won or lost on the way people looked at the composure of the candidates, and that's something that's a very intangible thing. In, in looking at it tonight, I had the feeling that both candidates seemed to be in total control. As we talked about earlier, the pressure on these two men standing in that podium or in those two podiums before 80 million to 100 million people, the pressure had to be awesome because they realized that the beads of perspiration and the, uh, the way that uh, Nixon's demeanor in 1960 uh, uh, lost him the debate and uh, consequently the election. I want to say one more thing. This pressure was certainly on President Carter also because he had to gain votes tonight in order to win the state of Ohio and that's quite, quite a big pressure to have. And we're going to be back with more coverage right after these messages. Well, even after watching tonight's debate, it may be uh, as tough to forecast the winner of next week's election as it is to forecast our That's weather. That's true. Yeah, well, we haven't had a winner lately in the weather, but it was interesting to note at the Republican headquarters, they, they really felt that Reagan won, and at the Democratic headquarters, they felt Carter won. <laughs> Dog <That> was, <laughs> We'll have the weather in one minute. <laughs> If you expect to get a smooth ride out of a rough trail, something has to come between you and all the bumps, like a thick cushion seat, a well-balanced chassis, a soft ride suspension system. You can find some of these things on some snowmobiles, or you can find them all on one. The Smooth Riding Trail Fire, one more of the sleds from John Deere. Well, Nancy, just pick up the phone and call him. Say what I say. Doug, it's Jennifer. Busy? Well, how about coming over for a drink? Look, Nan, a few years ago, it wasn't considered respectable for a woman to ask a man over for a drink. But I figure when I'm serving Harvey's Bristol Cream, it's more than just respectable. It's downright upright. Nancy, I've got to go. 
Harvey's Bristol Cream. All this week, at a 4 o'clock movie special presentation, watch the explosive battle for power, Washington, behind closed doors. Starring Jason Robards as the power-hungry president, Cliff Robertson is the CIA director who opposes him, and Robert Vaughn is the corrupt presidential advisor. Also starring Stephanie Powers and John Houseman. Don't miss a minute of this explosive expose of political intrigue all this week at 4. Turn to Washington Behind Closed Doors starring Cliff Robertson and Jason Robards continuing tomorrow at 4. Now here's Dick, the only Cleveland area weatherman endorsed by the American Meteorological Society. Dick? Our weather in three words for the next two days, chilly but dry. High today was 43 degrees, and our rain got out of here in most areas, at least uh, in the late morning or early afternoon. And unfortunately, uh, skies are clearing tonight. That is not a good sign. 40 degrees uh, in the city at this hour, and the humidity 57%. Barometer 30.17. Our wind is northwest 11. We had 0.16 in the rain bucket here at TV8. At Hopkins, they had, uh, I think, exactly a quarter of an inch was the last report I saw. And pollution standard 45 today, a very similar uh, report is indicated for tomorrow. We have dry skies tonight over in the areas east of the city in the high ground. They may be getting a bit of light drizzle left over, perhaps a snowflake, but I think it is going to be no big deal at all. 43, 29 today, and those clear skies have, are allowing the temperatures really to tail off now. The heat is radiating out into space. 58 and 46 a year ago. It is 29 at Hopkins Airport. The cloud layer is still hanging over the Youngstown area. They've broken out into partly cloudy at Canton. It is cloudy at Youngstown, so that's the cloud deck moving to the east. Sunrise, 6.55 tomorrow. Sundown, 5.27. And the eastern half of the country was under a lot of cloud cover today. South Florida peaking out where they were very warm this afternoon. And just patchy clouds out over the Midwest and far west. High barometer coming in, and you see the realm that it is uh, has taken over. Very pleasant summer-like down in Southern California, even at San Francisco today and out in Arizona. They were really warm down in South Florida. This is the front that brought the rain last night and this morning. It has moved away. Storm center to the northeast, this high moving in. Here's the airflow coming at us with this result. Our winds tonight and tomorrow, north-northwest, 10 to 15. Tonight, cloudy to partly cloudy, and many areas are clearing out entirely cold. 28 to 35, I think will do it tonight. Some areas could come under that. For Wednesday, any clouds would be patchy. We'll have sunshine, chilly, 46 only tomorrow. And tomorrow night, the cold will be on. I would think 25 to 30 will do it. And then for Thursday, partly to mostly sunny, 50. Clouds moving in Friday ahead of a weather front. Chance of showers during Friday, 53. Right now for Saturday, a sprinkle in the morning, then mostly cloudy, 55. And with the latest maps coming in, it looks like Sunday will be around 60 degrees, which would be very pleasant. Good looking forecast. Thanks, Dick. President Carter has just arrived at his reception headquarters at Bond Court, where New Center 8's Mike Cragen is standing by live. The decision will be not in the hands of debate judges or the League of Women Voters or the press. Okay, we're here. President Carter has arrived uh, just a couple of moments ago. Uh, you can see him up on the podium now. He's addressing his uh, crowd of supporters. Uh, every once in a while, they burst into wild applause, wave the signs, as you can see right now. Behind the president, a panel of dignitaries, uh, many of them uh, I recognize as uh, local and uh, national union leaders. President now thanking his supporters, really didn't have too much to say. Uh, it was a very brief appearance. Uh, of course, he's been through a lot in the past half an hour, hour and a half or so. He's walking off now, uh, kissing the widow of uh, the late slain civil rights leader, Martin Luther King. Coretta Scott King, and uh, that about wraps us up from here. Mike Cregan live with the city cam, Carter Debate Reception Headquarters, downtown. Well, there was politic in here in Cleveland tonight, but down at the Coliseum, they were playing basketball. That's right. I can't tell you who won the debate, but I can tell you who won the basketball game. And if you'll stick with us for just a minute, we'll show you the highlights. Today's target, Higley's Market. Objective, Mrs. Paul's Shorgas Board sale. Last year, the low Shorgas Board prices made their seafood disappear fast. I missed the fried clams completely. This year, we move faster. Ethel, you grab the fish fillets. Gertrude, the fish sticks. Okay? Move out. And Agnes, don't get lost in the dessert aisle. Mrs. Paul's Shorgas Board prices make our seafood move fast, so you'd better do the same. 
London isn't always raining, and London Fog isn't always raincoats. London Fog is the outdoors unlimited collection in luxurious quilted jackets, rugged action jackets. Warm, supple leathers, too. London Fog, famous for quality in great-looking coats and jackets that let you laugh at all kinds of weather. London Fog is available at Higby's. See Northern Ohio's largest photographic equipment show, cameras, accessories, seminars, demonstrations, holiday in Lakeside at East 12th, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, November 7th, 8th, and 9th. Well, the Cavaliers found out tonight they've got a ways to go before they can play with the big boys. The Philadelphia 76ers whipped the Cavs 119 to 101.